Carolyn here with Five Acres Honey Farm. Uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about some apple trees and uh, how I came to decide the varieties that I want to attempt to grow here uh, in the Piedmont area of North Carolina. Uh, it's a little cold outside so I'll just show you the trees and then I'm gonna spend some time indoors to tell you a little bit more about them uh, where it's a little bit more comfortable. So let's take a look. All right, the trees I ordered from Century Farm Orchards um, in Reedsville, North Carolina, and they've come, you know, their roots and some soil um, are in here, um, and they look really healthy. You can kind of tell, um, and I'll get out of here so you can see the light better, but all of the bark looks really great on them, and they just looks, you could tell that they've been pretty well cared for, um, and they're just, you know, snipped off right here. And uh, they came this way. I ordered 10 trees, um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about the varieties and why I settled on them. Much warmer than being outside right now. Uh, I figured I would tell you a little bit about uh, why I chose the apple varieties that I did. Uh, a challenge that I have here, along with pretty much anyone in this North Carolina uh, region, is uh, the challenge of cedar apple rust. And there are plenty of videos and resources online about that um, fungal affliction that uh, many varieties of apples uh, are susceptible to. Uh, and it's in, in a nutshell, it's related to a spore that feeds on um, having an apple tree and a, a cedar tree uh, within generally a five mile radius of each other. Uh, and uh, even if you do uh, you know, remove cedar trees from your property, it's not going to prevent the exposure for you know, all the cedar trees that are within a five mile radius from, from where you're planting your apple trees. Uh, I had, when, I, when we first moved here, which was about almost seven years ago now, uh, I had planted about a half dozen apple trees in the space where I currently have my beehives. And I was not interested in bees at the time. I was not interested in gardening at the time. I just figured we have, we have this land we're not using. Let me just plant some apple trees and then, you know, in 10, 15 years, we'll have some apples, you know, it'll just be like, set it and forget it kind of thing. And I was obviously very naive. And I set them up over there uh, with some deer cages just to protect them from that and didn't care for them, did not fertilize them, nothing. And, um, and I noticed during the first year of having them that there was um, a lot of yellow spots on the leaves and that's when I started to to google and learn about cedar apple rust and that the varieties I planted were very susceptible to them and um, and the the downside of cedar apple rust with a young tree is that it's not going to uh, mature in a healthy way and it may not have very good production so I didn't want them taking up space there if they're really not going to be producers and you know, over time, when I started getting interested in bees and beekeeping, uh, I, I figured that spot was actually a really good place to put the hives. It has good southern exposure. And then eventually, when I got interested in gardening, that's where I added the garden. And now, with the, the 10 trees that I've ordered, uh, it might make sense to put the trees back over in that area. Uh, however, uh, I can show you a little bit how there's no more room left in that space. <laughs> This little one, this is Cleo. She's being a little too loud. <laughs> so I think she'll be more quiet if she's sitting over here. So uh, so over in the apiary space, there, there really isn't enough room. Uh, I had already planted some berry bushes and mulberry trees and the way that the garden is positioned, uh, there, there really wouldn't be a wise spot to, to place apple trees um, other than they would be casting shade onto the garden. And the, the only good space is where my high tunnel will be put up in the next few weeks. So I knew I wasn't gonna put the apple trees over there. And I'll go into more about that um, in another video about selecting the site. But for now, with the varieties of the apple trees that I wanted to, um, to plant here, I specifically researched varieties that were resistant to, if not quote unquote immune to, cedar apple rust. And uh, by doing that, um, I had connected with a, um, a farmer here in uh, the Chatham County area, and he recommended uh, Century Farm in Orchards and in Reedsville for their heirloom varieties. And Century Farm, I'll link to their website here, 
has great resources and descriptions about the different varieties. And uh, from reading everything on their website and then also, you know, Googling the varieties before I ordered them, I found that they had reputations for resistance or immunity to cedar apple rust. So I wanna make sure that the effort I'm going to, um, not, not just the expense, but, but the actual effort, because it is an effort to, to plant them, protect them and maintain the trees, that we're, I'm setting them up for, um, for the best possible uh, outcome. So the other piece that I looked at when selecting the varieties was uh, their maturity uh, dates. So I wanted to have like a good span of like early uh, harvest to mid season to late season. And uh, one of the varieties is Arkansas Black. And I've, I've uh, used that variety in, in making pie over the years and I really love it. Uh, it's known for storing really well. And from what I had read, it originated ar around like the late 1800s uh, in, in obviously the Arkansas area. And, uh, and it, it matures in late October. Another variety that I got is um, Black Twig which is also known as mammoth black twig. And from what I read, its origins are a little um, uncertain. Um, it's speculated that it's been Arkansas, Tennessee, um, or, or the Virginia area at some time in the 1800s. And it's supposed to be good for fresh eating. And that matures in like late September to early October. So that kind of gives me a little bit more of a window as well. And Grimes Golden is another variety that I got. And I specifically got Grimes Golden because there were some notes on Century Farms website about some of the other varieties that I got um, really need to have like multiple um, varieties around to help them pollinate the best. And Grimes Golden is one of their recommended uh, types of apples to have around to help in that pollination and fruiting. So I got three of those and it's related to um, the Golden Delicious apple. And, uh, and this particular one, uh, ripens in September and it's it's good for for fresh eating and for cider as well. Johnson's Keeper is another type that I got and I believe it it may be related to I think it was called Johnson's Red Winter and from what I read um, that it was believed to be a lost variety of apple and uh, and so it could be a potentially this this potentially extinct variety of apple that was brought back uh, originating also i feel like all these apples just kind of came about in the 1800s and and that one is a little bit more of a late maturity in the fall so then that kind of helps on on both ends of having uh, some early harvest and later harvest uh, someday one of the interesting things that i read was that the wine sap variety of apple are immune to cedar apple rust. So I don't know if that means that all wine sap varieties, because there's a few different kinds, or if there's like a, like some kind of pure wine sap variety, but I got two different kinds. I got the old fashioned wine sap and the Virginia wine sap. And, um, and those I'm hoping I, by having both of those kinds, I'll be setting myself up in a position where I, I won't have to be managing cedar apple rust um, as much and uh, the other thing is that I really like using the old fashioned wine sap apples in pie. So that will be like another one to, to have like multiple types. Uh, I'm just being really optimistic that all of these trees will be successful and then I'm going to have a lot of pie in my future to be able to, uh, to combine them all together. My plans with all these different apple varieties are to not only have more forage for the bees and for native pollinators, uh, but obviously I would like to be able to, to store the apples um, and preserve them, make pie, and, and just enjoy having some homegrown, uh, organically raised apples. Uh, but I, um, as I was trying to figure out like where to put them, I realized that it's going to be a bit of a challenge uh, because of the shade in different parts of our yard, but there's also some other challenges with some structures and um, and wanting to have them in a space where I'll be able to keep an eye on them. So I'll, I'm doing another video about the site location and some things to avoid, uh, both that are unique to this property here, but may, they may make you think a little bit differently about you know, your, your space and how you're planning 
uh, out your orchard or if you're just adding, you know, you know, two or three trees or however you're planting it. And the other thing that I, that started to come more into mind as I was picking out a site location is that I don't want the apple trees to just be, this is where the apple trees are. I really want them to be positioned in a more permaculture focused um, sense where I want to make sure that I'm putting in an understory and, um, and some perennial plants uh, to help serve as living mulch and to help um, balance everything in the, the orchard area. So uh, I'm, I'm really interested uh, in hearing thoughts about how I've selected the space. So to keep an eye out for, for that video about the site location and uh, you probably, I won't have the opportunity to kind of go back and like, you know, prevent me from, from making any mistakes there because I, I do need to get them in the ground in the next day. Uh, but hopefully if there is anything that I can do uh, better, please, please let me know.